Oh, here, listen, we need to talk about tiny eye brushes and hooded eyes. I'm gonna talk about some tiny eye brushes that you guys should all know about. I don't care how big or small your eyes are. However, if you have smaller eyes or if you have hooded eyes or if you feel like uh, blending is just like, no matter what you do, your eyeshadow just kind of goes everywhere, this is the video for you. <laughs> so one of the most common comments that I receive on a lot of my eyeshadow videos are, I wish I could do this look. Um, this doesn't work on my eyes. Eye makeup doesn't work on my eyes. I can get eyeshadow to work and get eyeliner to work. And I want to try and obviously like, they're coming from a million different kinds of people <laughs> with different eye shapes. So I wanna try and address as many of those problems with this video as I possibly can. It's obviously gonna depend what your anatomy is and all of those things, but hopefully we can help everybody. So obviously if you have hooded eyes that are like severely hooded compared to my eyes, which are like, I only have a slightly hooded lid, there are going to be certain makeup looks that I can do because of the space that my eyes allow that people who have severely hooded eyes will not be able to do. It's just a plain simple fact. I've talked about this a little bit. You do have to kind of accept your anatomy if you're not gonna get some kind of a crazy surgery or whatever. You have to accept certain things that like a severely hooded eye probably isn't going to be able to do a cut crease if they have a really low brow, you know? And even if they can, if they have a higher brow but their lid is completely hooded, it's not gonna look the same that it will on someone who has like a very deep Killian Murphy eye socket, you know what I'm saying? Any makeup application for hooded eyes, for smaller eyes, the main problem is your brush. It's your brush size. And not only that, it's the variation that you have. I'm guilty of trying to use one brush to do a million different things. I do this all the time. You wanna keep in mind that you have enough variation for the things that you are trying to achieve that are also going to actually work for your eye size, shape, and preference. Um, I recently, not recently, I prefer smaller brushes. I used to use much larger brushes and I guess my preference just kind of like changed a little bit. What I was looking for changed and also the variation that's av av available to us has changed vastly. So what I'm gonna do is go over some categories. I'm gonna link all of my favorite brushes down below, the ones that I would recommend. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about some of the different things that you can use them for. Quickly before we like deep dive, uh, if you do end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We're dope here. It's a dope group of people. Anyway, number one, everybody needs some kind of a blending brush. Now a blending brush. What do you see when you see a blending brush? Me personally, when I see a, when I think of a blending brush, I think of a Mac 217. That's old school. Old school blending brush, classic blending brush. I don't even use those anymore. Something kind of along these lines. Maybe this was like, I think this was the same size as a Mac. Ziva, what are you doing? Ziva, this might be a little bit larger than a Mac 217. This is the refer. 15 brush, blending brushes. This is what I see when I think of a blending brush. Something like big and fluffy, essentially. Now, depending on what look you're going for, these could be great. Uh, and also depending on your eye shape. This is the refer 15 and then this is the 27 brush. So 15 is a little bit smaller. If I'm doing a one shadow look, I probably am going to be going for the slightly smaller one, dipping into that shadow and blending it all over my lid and into the crease a little bit. This brush is perfect for that. Now I would typically avoid using the 27 brush for that kind of thing, simply because it is quite large and I don't like it when I bring a ton of shadow like right in here. So I need a little bit more precision to make sure that when I'm blending, this isn't like getting in here. You know what I mean? Cause this whole area, if I get product in there, can end up making it look dark, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole thing. So the size of your brush is incredibly important. And I always gravitate more towards precision despite having like a generous amount of space between my upper lash line and the bottom part of my brow. So if you're someone with smaller eyes, hooded eyes, or you feel like your eyeshadow is getting blown out too easily, some of the best blending brushes that I have used are these guys right here. So we have the Refer 13 brush right here. This is the Sigma Small Tapered brush. This is the E45 right here. The Refer 14 brush here and then the Sigma E33 brush right here. All of these brushes are different. They all have like very defined characteristics to them. Um, and they are quite a bit smaller than the Refer 15, similar-ish to the Mac 217 brush or your classic blending brush. 
The way I use these kind of depends. I would say the Refer 14 brush is pretty much my like go-to blending brush. I can kind of like slip it right in the crease like that. And I can um, create like a nice amount of detail. It's very, it's nice and like domed. So you get like a really nice blend, but it's small enough that I don't have to worry about like taking too much product in the inner part of my eye. I can create that detail, but it's also going to like blend the color out nicely. In other words, I can place it in the crease and then blend it up and out. I have plenty of um, versatility with this brush. The 13 brush is a <laughs> ever so slightly like shorter and a little bit more densely packed. So I typically like to use that if I'm building up a deeper color in the outer part and into my crease, or if I'm taking stuff onto the lid. That's usually what I like it for. It's a little bit more concentrated, so it's gonna pack on a little bit more, but it also has like a nice dome shape, so it does blend well. Next, we have the E33 from Sigma right here, which is a little bit longer um, and a little bit more like splayed like that. When I do this, it's a little bit more like stiff. It has like a little bit more of like a stiff feel, um, but it's quite velvety on top. So this one I would typically use interchangeably with the Refer 14 brush. Um, I just tend to gravitate a little more towards this one, uh, but they work pretty similarly. This one just has like a little bit more of a bounce to it than this. And then again from Sigma, the small tapered blending brush. This is a really great brush because, because you can see that dome that it creates. So it actually points pretty stiff right at that top. So what's great about this is if you pack that shadow all over the tip, you can kind of like place it in around your eyeball. So if you feel like you have a really hard time keeping the eyeshadow in one place, like for instance, if these brushes, you can't really use this kind of brush. You just get a little too haphazard and product goes everywhere. Then this is a really great brush for carving out that crease. And because of the shape, it really does a lot of the blending for you. This is a great brush. Next up, I wanna talk about detail blender brushes. These are typically, well, I've got three right here that are just about the same size. So I have the Sigma E42 brush right here, which is a little bit more densely packed than those other brushes. A little bit more stiff. You can see it's not really like, there isn't a lot of give. Next, I have the BK Beauty A504 brush, this one right here, which I have been loving. It's such an, it's just like such a nice brush. It's got like a, a nice, amount of splay at the top. I don't know how well you can see the difference between the Sigma one and the BK Beauty one, but this has just like a really beautiful amount of like bristle variation. So it's great for blending. I've been using it for my nose actually, <laughs> um, but it's perfection for creating that detail in the crease. Now, typically the way that I would use these three, oh, sorry. And then I have the Samantha. <laughs> this is actually part of a set. So I can't link the individ individual brush, but this is her detail blending brush, which is very, similar to this one. This is a little bit more rounded on top and the Sig, uh, the Samantha one is a, has a little bit more give all the way around. So it's just like a little bit more soft. These are the brushes that I would go in with after I use these. Uh, if I am applying my first shade, I'm going to be going in with these brushes typically. I guess this guy's kind of like an in-between the, the 13 brush, but He's kind of on his own, but I'm putting him in this category. These are what I would use to build up a slightly darker shade in the crease, bringing it onto the lid, basically when I am building up that contrast. Now, depending on your eye shape, these might actually be really good for blending underneath the lash line as well. Sometimes I use them for that because I do have quite a bit of room down here. And if I'm like smoking something out, if you have a very, very small lash line, or if you don't like to smoke your eyeshadow at, out too much, then you probably want to avoid that. Okay, next I wanna talk about lid, not just lid, lash line, lid, uh, again, building up the crease. I have two refer brushes here that are my faves, the O2 brush and the 28 brush. So they're pretty similar. They're both a little bit wider this way and they get a little thinner that way. Uh, the 28 is a little thinner and taller. And this guy, the O2, is just like a little bit shorter and a little more square. So these are perfection for applying to your lid for precision around the crease if you want to sharpen up that line, if you want to blend around the lash line, blending on the lower lash line, keeping it close to the lashes, 
maybe buffing it out ever so slightly with the O2 brush, which is a little bit thicker. Um, I've also seen Hung Van Go use the O2 brush. So actually starting off with this, uh, building it up in the crease and blending it to the outer corner and out a little bit, back onto the crease, the cat's in the litter box. These brushes, in my opinion, are essential for their versatility. Absolutely essential. You always need a brush that's going to be a little bit thinner, like a little more flat, and then get a little bit more wide. Always, always a necessity. Which brings me to these four, which are also essential because of their versatility. We have four brushes here that are all similarly shaped, varying sizes. This one right here is, the, uh, is from the Yano series by Beautylish, this is brush number 10. Uh, this is an incredibly soft brush, incredibly soft and very, very pointy at the top. So you have a lot of blendability, but also a lot of precision. Uh, similar to it is the Refer 26 brush, which is a very similar shape, a little less like give in the bristles, a little more stiff, very, very soft as well. And also like a pretty good amount of precision at the top, but ever so slightly more rounded than the Yano series. And then we have the O3 and the 23. Uh, if you have been watching my channel, then you know these guys. This one is very similar in shape to the 26 brush, uh, but it's obviously smaller. And then we have the 23 brush, which is an even smaller version of that. Both with really nice bristle variation uh, and blendable options, obviously just like varying sizes. These four brushes are incredible for once again, pretty much anything you wanna do. Typically I would use these two either up again, adding like detail to the crease, lash line, inner corner, lower inner corner, lower lash line, brow bone, inner corner highlight. I mean, I use this all over my face, essentially. I, I like to use it for like highlights on my nose, on my cupid's bow. Exact same thing with the Yano series brush. They're just like a little bit different, obviously subtle differences. These two are essentially exactly the same, just even more precision and depending on your eye shape would replace those. So O3 brush, you can use this to really carve out your crease again, lash line, lower lash line, inner corner, you understand. It's basically the same thing with the 23 brush as well. This is fantastic actually for creating a smoky effect to your lash line. This is something that I love to use this one for or precision along my lower lash line. A lot of people talk about flat definer brushes for their lash lines. If that's something that you prefer, let's see, I do have one here. This is the Sigma E15 flat definer brush. Um, a lot of people like these for their lower lash lines. I'm just like not a huge fan, but I don't know. If you like something like this better than this, then go for it. <laughs> so if you have extremely hooded eyes, you might actually want to use the Refer 26 or the Yano series brush as your crease brush or as your lid brush because you don't have a lot of space going on. And then maybe if you're doing like little bits here and there, for example, uh, darkening up the outer corner, you wanna go in with this brush so that you have more precision because if you don't have as much room as me, then you definitely don't need a brush this big, you know? And you definitely don't need one this big. Which brings me to my final two. I have two eyeliner brushes here. So we have this one, which is just like basically your, you know, standard straight eyeliner brush. And then we have this one on the side, which is a super, super tiny angled brush. I would say I also use these essentially intercha interchangeably. I do love the uh, Sigma Samantha winged liner brush. You can use this obviously for a winged liner. You can use it to define your lower lash line, to extend your inner corner, to find your upper lash line, to create a cut crease, to draw individual lashes. This is really all going to depend on your anatomy. Based on mine, because I have not super tight skin anymore, and I also have like a lot of creases and loose skin underneath my um, lash line, I tend to like to use this one, which is from the Dream Sigma collection. Uh, it's the Dream Eyeliner Brush. Basically any eyeliner brush that looks like this, but this one's really nice. It's a perfect length, nice and stiff. This is excellent for drawing um, like a puppy dog wing, something lower, drawing a wing in general, adding detail to your lower lash line. All of the things that I said about this, it's just like, which one do you essentially 
prefer. And I would say I typically go for this one. It kind of depends on what I'm going for. But one of these brushes is going to be especially essential if you have smaller eyes, because this kind of brush is perfection for if you want to create a really detailed like inner corner highlight, or again, any kind of detail around the eye, it's perfection. Say you use this brush to do blending around your lash line, around your lid, then it's probably going to be maybe a little bit too large to do any detail work for your inner corner. All right, guys, that's my guide to tiny eye brushes. Personally, I think all of these styles, I mean, there's a bunch of like repeats essentially, but one of each of these categories is essential for you to create a proper eye look in my opinion, um, especially if you've been feeling like you've been having a hard time with details or certain applications. And especially if you have hooded eyes and you feel like all the brushes that you've been using are just like way too big, or like me, you are guilty of using the same brush for everything. Uh, all right, guys, I hope this was helpful. I think it was actually really funny that I filmed an entire video about tiny eye brushes and didn't put any eyeshadow on. Please let me know any questions down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe uh, and turn on notifications if you feel like it. Um, that is it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.